Hey, what's up? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be starting on a reading vlog where I read new release thriller books. So the three books that I'm going to be reading for this video include these three books here. The first one is going to be The Drift by CJ Tudor. This is a new release from one of my favorite thriller authors. CJ Tudor is an author that I've really enjoyed. Some of her books like The Chalk Man and The Burning Girls are some of my favorites from her. And so this is her latest release. And this one, it follows three different characters and it takes place in like a post-apocalyptic, like pandemic kind of world. I've also heard that there's a lot of like, you know, snowy atmosphere with this one. And so I'm really excited to check this one out. I'm also going to be reading The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz, which this is one that I'm also very excited to read. This one also looks like it has some snowy ambiance happening on the cover, but this is a story where we're following a writer who gets this like very exclusive opportunity to go on this writing retreat with a bunch of other writers, and then things don't exactly go to plan. Things get a little, a little chaotic, a little weird. I've been hearing very hit or miss things about this one from a lot of my friends, so it just has me even more more intrigued to check this one out. And then I'm also going to be reading The Golden Spoon, which this one is also a very recent release. Um, this one just came out in the month of March. And this one, the premise on the back says only murders in the building meets the maid, which is like my biggest intrigue on this. And all I know is that it's about a very intense uh, baking competition TV show and then somebody turns up dead. And essentially it's like a whodunit. We're trying to figure out what's going on. And so I'm so excited to get to these three books within this vlog. And also if you're on my Patreon, I'm going to be doing an extended version of this vlog where I'm also going to be reading the new book episode 13 and I think that one is more of a horror than a thriller novel but that one also looks really good. I have the audiobook from my library and this one um, from what I understand it's about like a, an investigative paranormal team where they're going to be staying at this place that they think is haunted and it kind of follows like their tv show and we follow from a few different characters and it sounds really cool. So if you're on my patreon um, this book will be included in this vlog and if you would like to see the extended extended version of this vlog. If you're watching on YouTube, then I will have the link linked down below for my extended Patreon vlog. But yeah, let's get into it. I'm so excited to get to these three books and I think I'm going to start with The Drift. So let's get to it. What's up? How's it going? It's a Sunday afternoon. I have started reading The Drift and I'm currently doing Patreon reading sprints right now and so far I've been able to get 110 pages into this just this morning and so far I'm feeling like this story is fine but to be honest it's kind of like boring me to tears right now. Like I'm just not that invested as I want to be. I've read you know quite a bit of CJ Tudor in the past like this is probably like my fourth or maybe my fifth book from this author like I don't really know but usually I find that this author I'm very hit or miss with CJ Tudor, but for the most part, I have really enjoyed her books, which is why I, I continue to pick them up. This one, um, you know, I didn't really know what this one was going to be about when I was starting it. I had just read on the inside little, you know, blurb here. It was saying that there was a, a catastrophe and survival at the end of the world. And so in my head, I was like, oh my God, is this going to be like apocalyptic or like what the fuck is going on? And so far it's interesting because we're following these three different perspectives from these three different characters and they're all kind of dealing with very different situations. But the thing that's confusing though about trying to read this book right now is that there are so many characters because each one of these, you know, three characters that we're following, they're also dealing with, you know, like four to five characters each that they're like interacting with. And so I'm trying to like, you know, take notes and like remember which each character is and like how they're related and like what is actually happening in the book. But I don't know, so far it's just been kind of slow. I mean, we open the story with this girl named Hannah who's like a medical student and she wakes up at the in this car that's like been in a car crash and they're like stuck in the middle of a snowstorm. They're isolated. They don't have any way to communicate with anybody and they don't know where they are. And she's kind of like dealing with all the people in this car. And then we also follow from the point of view of this woman named Meg. And she's also in like a cable car that's like hanging over the side of a mountain. And she wakes up and she's been in an accident as well, but they're in different cars, I think. So like, I think they might've been connected, like something 
might have happened there. But she's in another car dealing with another set of about five strangers who she doesn't recognize and she kind of wakes up and she doesn't remember how she got into that car either which is strange. And then we also follow from the point of view of this guy named Carter, and he's at this place called The Retreat. That's like a ski chalet place. And that's The Retreat is where both of these cars were trying to get to, I guess. But then like there's somebody in their car that is like infected with some kind of virus, I think. It's like very um, vague so far, the way that this book is describing this like virus or this infection that's going around. I don't fully understand like what it is or like how dangerous it is. Like, do are we living in a world that's completely like apocalyptic? Like, is the world over? I don't really know. Like, I feel like that's not so far. That hasn't really been the main thing of the story, you know, because so far the story has mostly been about survival for these two girls that are like stuck in these cars. They're just kind of talking about like how they're going to survive through the night because it's so fucking cold and they don't have any food. And there's like, you know, <laughs> there's outside dangers that might be a threat to them outside of the car. And so that's kind of what those two timelines have been about so far and then with like the guy that's actually at the retreat his timeline has also been kind of like boring so far in my opinion like I don't know they're just talking about how they think somebody's like stolen food and then somebody's like missing and they're trying to find where this guy's at and like I don't know it's just not the most entertaining thing for me so far like I'm just kind of confused on like what actually is the premise of this book and how are these characters all gonna connect like I just don't know if I'm that invested or if I care that much but I don't know I'm just gonna make some iced coffee right now I might make a snack and then I'm just gonna continue listening to this audiobook while I'm on Patreon sprints this afternoon and just kind of hope that it gets better. o'clock at night right now. Me and my sister, you know, after I got off Patreon reading sprints, I was, we went on a quick little walk around the neighborhood, which was really nice. And then we made some dinner. We made some burgers and some fries. We actually ended up making sliders because we didn't realize that our hamburger buns like went stale and they were all moldy. And I was like, fuck. And then we ended up making like slider type burgers with the uh, leftover like hoagie rolls that we had. Shortly after dinner, I finished reading The Drift. And I've got to say, you know, I feel like this is going to be probably like a one or two star book for me. I don't know. I kind of am leaning towards two stars because there was a kind of twist in this book that I didn't see coming. And it's like, I want to give credit where credit is due when a book can surprise me or, you know, have an unexpected moment. It's like, that's what I'm really looking for in thrillers. And so this definitely had that towards the end. Like there was a few things that was like a couple little twists and turns that I didn't see coming. But otherwise, oh my gosh, this book was so boring in my opinion. It was kind of like, I don't know, it read a little bit more like an action kind of like horror kind of story, if that makes any sense. Like, I don't know, I feel like this book kind of reads like one of the bad seasons of The Walking Dead. <laughs> it's like, it tries to be like The Walking Dead, but I just didn't care about anything that was happening. I didn't care about a single character in this book. I don't know, I just feel kind of bummed out about it because I do feel like this book had potential, even though I do think from the start, I thought this book was kind of boring and I could see it, you know, like I could have seen so much potential for this story though, because where it could have gone, it could have been really interesting, but 
but I just feel like this book didn't do it for me and I also just thought you know there were way too many characters in this book so not only could I not get invested in any of the characters because there were just too freaking many of them but trying to keep them all straight in my head was very confusing like there would be so many times in this book where I would be getting Meg and Hannah's timelines confused because literally like the same type of shit was happening in both of their chapters where they're like awake in a car with a bunch of strangers and they're trying to figure out like what's going on it just they were too similar like I don't know I just didn't really enjoy that and then I really didn't enjoy reading from Carter's point of view like he's definitely one of my like least favorite characters in this book and I don't think he's meant to be a very likable character anyways but even still like reading from his point of view it was like watching paint dry like I was just so freaking bored out of my mind the only perspective I was slightly interested in was Hannah's for the most part but even still I feel like her perspective chapters never really went anywhere and it was just so freaking slow and so freaking boring and I think I'm just so mad about it because I had such high hopes for this one and you know this is definitely my least favorite CJ Tudor that I've read so far. I feel like maybe I should have known, you know, because I was not enjoying it that much in the beginning. I should have maybe just DNF'd, you know, and moved on with my life. But I was like, no, I want to give this a fair chance because I have liked books from this author before, you know, so I thought maybe it'll improve. Maybe it'll get more interesting, but then it just never did. Like, luckily it was a pretty quick audiobook experience, you know, like I was able to listen to this entire audiobook within, you know, these last 24 hours. So, I mean, it's good that I got through it quickly because then Oh god, like I would have just hated it even more if I had stretched this out over a couple of days. Oh, what a bummer. I just really wanted to love this and I didn't. I really can't think of a single like good compliment thing to say about it. So I feel like maybe it should be a one star. But oh my gosh, after um finishing that book, we ended up watching The Whale. Me and my sister, we watched the movie The Whale because the Oscars are one week from tonight on the day that I'm filming this. And so I've been wanting to catch up on some of the, you know, Oscar nominated films. And so we watched The Whale tonight and like, dude, I think that that movie just like broke me. <laughs> that movie, I don't know what it is, dude. It just triggered me so hard and I was sobbing. Like I was literally sobbing for like 30 minutes after we finished the movie. Like it just really um, impacted me emotionally in a way that not a lot of movies have. And I think at the end of the day, it's because you know, the idea of like loneliness and not being able to take care of yourself is one of my biggest triggers. I mean, especially, you know, after loving We Spread last year, I think it's very clear that I'm terrified at the idea of like aging, loneliness, and not being able to take care of yourself or rely on yourself the way that you used to be able to. That is clearly one of my biggest triggers. Like it makes me so emotional. And it's almost like one of those movies where like, I'm glad that I watched it in a way, but I feel like shit. Like I feel so depressed after watching that movie. Like I literally feel right now the way that I felt when I finished reading like A Little Life. Or you know, it's like, it's so rare that a movie can actually make me feel so depressed in this way. I'm like genuinely so sad. Like that movie was so, oh, it hurt me so badly. And so, oh God, I'm really gonna need to pick me up. I feel like I'm just gonna like lay in bed and watch BTS videos to like make my heart happy again because that was so heavy and so fucked. So anyways, I feel like it's just been a really weird rough day for me because having this like unexpected one star and then watching a movie that literally just wrecked me emotionally, like I am not okay. So hopefully tomorrow I can pick a book that is a lot better than The Drift and and, you know get this movie off of my mind because that was some emotional trauma it's like i obviously love watching movies that impact me emotionally but at the same time i hate it because i'm such a sensitive ass bitch and like i can't stop thinking about this movie and it was just so powerful <laughs>
Hello friends, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon on the next day. Me and my sister got quite a lot done this morning. We went grocery shopping, it took a while. And I got back home about like an hour or two ago. And now I've just been laying in bed reading the writing retreat. And I'm so excited because I just got to part two, which puts me at about, it's like about a hundred pages. I'm on page 95 right now. And I'm so happy to say that so far I am absolutely loving this. Like, I am obsessed. I feel like this book, um, it has a lot of the tropes that I just absolutely love to read about. And I'm actually pretty surprised because I pretty much went into this not really knowing anything about the plot. I just had heard that it involved writers and that it was going to have some like really good snowy kind of atmosphere, I guess. And so I really didn't know like what to expect with this story. Like I didn't even read the inside description here. So I was kind of surprised by everything that's already happening in the first 100 pages. But in this story, it's really interesting because we're following, you know, our main protagonist, her name is Alex and she's a writer. And she had this really, really close friendship for eight years with this other girl named Ren. And Ren is also a writer but recently they had this really awful falling out and we don't know like at the beginning of this book we don't know exactly like what happened between them but it was obviously like very traumatic for her and she can't really like be around Ren anymore because they had this really you know weird thing happen and they're not speaking anymore and it's been about a year since they're falling out but they're both really obsessed with this author named Rosa and she's like a really well-known author that's just like a big celebrity at this point and Rosa is often Offering this writing retreat experience that's gonna be at her home and her house by the way like her estate that she lives on it's very like haunting of hill house like it's very like creepy kind of like haunted vibes it's really cool because her the house where this author lives it has all of this history there where like this murder happened or like there was some kind of mystery involved there so it's really cool because the setting of this book is absolutely incredible but anyways so Rosa is hosting this like writing retreat and she wants to find like the best female writers in America and so she's going to give four women the opportunity to come to this writing retreat they're gonna be staying there for about a month and they're gonna be working with her directly and so of course our main character gets the opportunity to go it's kind of a situation where like somebody dropped out last minute and then she gets kind of thrown into it within like the last like last minute's notice here but it's also fascinating because Ren, you know, her like ex best friend also is going to be going to this writing retreat. And so they're going to have to be like, you know, sharing the same space for a while again. And we kind of get to see how our main character is dealing with the fact that she's like, oh, fuck, like I'm going to have to deal with Ren again. And it's really interesting because this is in the premise of the book. It says it right on the inside flap and I didn't realize this. But what's so cool about this is that when all of these women are staying at this writing retreat, this author Rosa, she's having them like all compete against each other basically and they have to write an entire novel in 28 days and whoever wins um, you know, this competition will not only get their novel published, but she's going to be like writing a foreword for them for their book. And also they get like a million dollar book deal out of like whoever wins this competition. And so it's just so fascinating because not only do I like love books that follow writers, like so I think the idea of like a book competition in this way with like a really well known celebrity author, like I just think that's so freaking fascinating. Then also I love reading books about kind of like toxic, complicated features female friendships and this already has that so much and like the setting of this you know estate where this author lives like this house is known for being kind of haunted and cursed and like somebody died there and they say that she's still there and so the freaking atmosphere is everything it's giving major like lock every door like atmosphere vibes so far but then I love the fact that we're following all these writers. Like, oh my gosh, I'm just obsessed. The premise of this book kind of does give a lot away because I was reading a part towards the bottom of this premise and I haven't even gotten to that yet. And I'm almost 100 pages in. So I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna read the rest of that premise because I just like, what the heck is going on in this book? I'm already so intrigued. It also looks like in uh, this next part that we're gonna get, you know, sections of her book, like the main character that she's writing, we're gonna get to see the book that she's writing. I'm just also pretty excited. I love when there's like a book within a book aspect to stories like this so I'm just having a great time like I don't want to jinx it but I feel like this could be five stars for me like it's going very well <laughs> but anyways I'm gonna continue reading and then we'll probably have dinner here pretty soon but I just want to read more of it Ooh.
Hey, hello, it is the next day. I meant to update you last night, but I ended up falling asleep and I did not remember to update you. But last night, um, my sister made this amazing little like burrito bowl thing with this uh, beef and there was like green beans and rice. It was really good. And then after dinner, I was reading a little bit more of the writing retreat and I got up to page 188. She is really hitting the fan. Like shit is getting very interesting. I feel like this book is absolutely unhinged and just like so chaotic and not really what I was expecting but like in the best way like I'm just kind of obsessed with this I also do feel like there is a part of the blurb towards the end that kind of spoils stuff because it really doesn't happen until almost the point where I'm at right now and I'm like what the heck because for the premise to talk about these things and then for it to not happen almost like 150 to 180 pages into the story I feel like that's getting into spoilery territory for me happy birthday to tank today is tank's third birthday oh my god so happy it's tanky's birthday huh but anyways i think the plan for now is to jump back in and try to finish the writing retreat i might also uh download the audiobook because i really want to uh curl my hair and paint my nails and get a bunch of different things done today so i think i might download the audiobook just so i can like listen while reading and doing other things you know i feel like i need to have a productive day today but i'm so excited to finish this like depending on how this goes it could be a five star for me like i'm very excited about this What's up? I'm back. I curled my hair and it's kind of um, chaotic. Like it's kind of too much. This is why I like to curl my hair the day before I have stuff going on and then I like to sleep on it. So it's not as, you know, curly and crazy. I also painted my nails. Um, I don't know how we feel about this one gold finger moment, but I thought, you know, I don't know. I thought in the moment it felt cute. So far, it still feels pretty cute. I don't know, I'm keeping it. Anyways, I wanted to let you know that I just finished the writing retreat and like, what the fuck? From that point where I last updated you, like page 180 all the way until the end, things just got so chaotic and unhinged, like to a point where I was like, I was not even expecting this. There was some plot twist towards the end that I don't know why I did not see it coming because I was just having a really great time with it and I was trying to like not think about it too hard because I didn't want to ruin anything about the book for me and it was just just such a blast to read this book. I feel like I need to think about it a little bit more, but I think I might give this five stars. It, it'll be up there at like a 4.5 or five stars just because it was so fun. And like, yes, the ending is ridiculous and over the top and just kind of insane, but it's like fun, you know? It's exactly what I'm looking for these days when I'm reading thrillers. Like I'm just here to have a good time. And this was definitely a good time. I mean, look at all these tabs. Like, are you serious? I was tabbing anytime there was like a surprising moment or something. I wanted to remember. There was even a really good, you know, like strong friendship between these two girls, like Alex and Ren. They just had the most interesting friendship and like relationship throughout this whole book. Like I was just so invested in their friendship, even though I thought like they were incredibly toxic at times, like holy shit. But I also just think it makes it so fascinating, you know? It's like those like toxic female friendships that are just, you know, like on the brink of being something more. Like I'm obsessed. I thought their friendship was so interesting and it's honestly, like one of the biggest things that kept me so intrigued throughout the book. I also really love where that storyline went of like, you know, this author who's like getting all of these writers to like compete against each other to write a book. Like the idea of this book is just so fascinating and I really do like where that storyline ended up going. This book is just so unhinged. I can see like a lot of people not really liking, you know, the ending of this book because it definitely gets a little bit like, whoa, what the fuck? But I just had so much fun with it. I had so much fun. I think it's a five star. Like it was just a good time. I do think I would reread this in the future and that just goes to show right there how much of a great time I had while reading it. So that's that's a big indicator to me right there that this should be five stars. It's like, oh my god, amazing. I'm so happy to have had another five star thriller because I feel like lately I've just been like having the worst luck 
with thrillers. Like, what the heck? Also, I'm sorry if you can hear the children literally screaming so freaking loud outside of my window. Like, what the fuck? What is going on? Anyways, um, Rachel is going to come into my room now and we're gonna do some Pilates or something. I don't know. She's been getting really into Pilates and so she asked if I could do some things with her and I was like, yeah, I mean, sure, why not? I was gonna go to the gym anyway, so might as well do something, right? <laughs> Hello, just checking in because me and my sister did Pilates and like holy shit I can't even feel my legs like that shit is no joke I often forget just how challenging Pilates can be but I have taken a quick shower I'm just laying on the couch with the birthday boy himself um, I'm gonna get started on the audiobook for the golden spoon I'm kind of excited because I just noticed that the audiobook is a full cast audiobook and I was lucky enough to get my hands on the audiobook because I put this audiobook on hold like freaking like three months Months ago or something like as soon as my library had the listing I put the audiobook on hold and I think this book just went on sale like a few days ago I'm pretty sure this book just published and I was lucky enough to already get the audiobook from my library like my library is just coming through and so I'm going to start on this one and hope that it's great I just hope it's I hope it's a fun light-hearted just great time you know like that's what I'm in the mood for right now How's it going? It's been about 24 hours since the last time that I updated you because last night I just barely started in on The Golden Spoon and then we ended up watching um, the latest episode of The Last of Us, which like that show is just absolutely incredible. Like I'm obsessed. Episode 8 was so freaking good and the ending made me cry. But like what's new with that show? You know, I feel like I'm always crying watching The Last of Us. That was really good. And then we were also catching up on Physical 100, that like, you know, Korean kind of like competitive, you know, show where they're all, it's like a sh test of strength. I don't know. I'm really enjoying that show. We're almost done with it. I think we only have a few left. And then today, um, me and my sister ended up going to the Friends Experience in Seattle. And so I didn't get like a ton of reading done today because we were pretty much in Seattle like almost the whole afternoon. Because, you know, Seattle is a two hour drive for us. And so it was kind of like a lot of driving today and just like hanging out in Seattle, but it was really fun. Oh my God, it was incredible. I highly recommend, like if you're a fan of Friends and they ever have this like pop-up experience thing in your area, I highly recommend going. It was so much fun. The sets just looked so realistic and it was really cool. But anyways, I did want to update you because now I'm about 60 pages into The Golden Spoon. And so far I'm feeling, you know, pretty fine, pretty meh about the book so far. I've been seeing a lot of my friends actually saying like, ever since I said I was reading this, a lot of people are like, oh, just so you know, it's not really a thriller and it's more of like a cozy mystery vibe. And so now I'm like, okay, like, what does that mean? I need to like readjust my expectations, I guess, because so far nothing is really happening. Right in the beginning, there's a kind of interesting prologue where we're just following this character, Betsy, and it's kind of like an intense moment that kind of feels like a flash forward, I think. And then the first chapter jumps back to two weeks ago, and then we follow as these characters are arriving at this place where they're going to be filming this. And I don't know, the writing style is kind of interesting because it just introduces you to all of these characters in these like blocky paragraphs like this and it's almost like a news article that was like put out as like a press release like oh so Gerald um you know he lives in the Bronx in New York and it's just kind of like a paragraph of like who they are and what they're doing and why they're coming onto the show I guess I don't know I feel like the writing style so far it's just kind of like boring it's like a little underwhelming so far um I mean I'm about 60 pages in and nothing's really happened like all they're doing is just like baking you know so far which I guess is like kind of what I expected, but I've heard that it takes a long time before things even happen in this. So I don't know. I feel like I'm just going to continue reading it, and especially because it is a very short book. You know, it's only 270 pages. So like, I'm just going to continue with it. Um, I am going to be doing some reading sprints tomorrow on Patreon with my friend Gavin. And so that should be really fun. I think I'm going to try to finish the book tomorrow while I'm on sprints with Gavin. Oh my gosh. Also tonight, um, Miley Cyrus just dropped her new album, Endless Summer. Oh, Endless 
Miley's Summer Vacation, my bad. And this album is pretty good. I've always been a big, you know, Miley Cyrus fan. Like, Plastic Hearts was, like, my fave. I love the song Jaded and Rose Colored Lenses. Like, those are definitely, like, my two top faves on the album. Like, oh my gosh, those are such great songs. And then also Wonder Woman. <gasps> like, Wonder Woman, like kind of broke my heart, almost made me cry. Like, it was really beautiful. There's definitely, like, a few songs on this album that would be, like, total skips for me that I don't think I would ever listen to, but I also do really like, um, Violet Chemistry. I don't know, it's like the songs that I like, I really like, you know? So that's cool. Anyways, I'm going to call it a night. I'm gonna go to bed, and then tomorrow, I'm gonna finish this book on reading Sprints with Gavin. That's the plan, and I'll update you when I have more thoughts. <laughs> afternoon. It is the next day. I've been doing some reading sprints with my friend Gavin pretty much all afternoon. I've also been getting a lot of stuff done today like doing laundry and just like, you know, a bunch of tedious tasks while I've been listening to this audiobook and I just now finished The Golden Saboon. And gosh, ugh, I feel I feel like this vlog has just been very like up and down for me so far because I think I'm probably gonna give this like two stars. You know, this is like one of those books where it definitely got mismarketed a little bit, I think, you know, because for this book to compare itself, like only murders in the building meets the maid, like that's like a big ballsy like comparison in my opinion. And even on the front little blurb here that says it's Knives Out meets Agatha Christie, like I'm sorry, but in what world? Because this book was just so slow for me. I feel like it took took so long. Like it was over 150, almost maybe 200 pages into this book before anything even remotely kind of interesting happened regarding like thrills and mystery elements. I feel like a lot of this book was just like about this baking competition, you know, and like a lot of the book was just focused on these characters and like getting to know each other. I feel like throughout this story, there would be like moments where you were like, oh, it's about to get interesting, and then nothing would come of it. And it would just be like, oh, like, what is that? And then it would be, like, easily explained. It's like where the author's, like, teasing you, like, oh, something interesting could be happening, but then it's quickly just resolved and, like, nothing interesting was happening. And it wasn't until so deep into the book before anything kind of thrilling or interesting even happened, in my opinion. And so, I don't know, I also just didn't really find myself to be that invested in the mystery anyways. Like, I, like once the mystery started getting introduced I just found myself not really caring and honestly like some of these characters there was only like maybe five or six characters that we were following in this book but I could not really care less about any of them like I don't know if it was just me or I don't know if maybe this is just not my kind of book because maybe people that enjoy the more like cozy kind of mystery kind of books would enjoy this but I just don't know if this was my thing especially too because at the end of this book when everything like really comes to a head I was just like oh okay like I guess that's interesting but but then like the last like 30-ish pages of this book is like a huge long kind of like read almost like an epilogue where it just kind of like wraps everything up and I was like okay I don't need the ending of this book to drag on this long you know because it was like everything that was happening had already happened and then we just get this like long what kind of feels like an epilogue I say it all feels like an epilogue even though there is an actual epilogue at the end of these long chapters at the end but it's just like I hate when books have especially in like thriller books like this where after all the like main action and thrills ends and then they'll just have this like long chunk at the end of the book that like 
goes through and explains like where the characters are at now and like how things are in their lives after the events. Like I don't fucking care. You know, like no offense, but that's not what I read thrillers for. Like I read it for like the action and like the intense moments. And so I, I don't know. I just don't think this book really worked for me. And I realized too, while I was filming this video that I read both The Golden Spoon and The Writing Retreat. And these were both options that I had for my book troop pick for the month of April. Because if you recall, um, when I had my Patreon vote on which book we'd be reading together for the month of April, it was The Golden Spoon versus The Writing Retreat versus What Lies in the Woods. And What Lies in the Woods ended up winning. And so I didn't realize that both of these books that I'm reading in this video, I could have had as book troop options. But to be honest, I'm really glad that this one didn't end up winning because not only because I didn't enjoy it, but I feel like this is one of those books where I don't really have too much to say about it, you know? And that's always one of my biggest fears when like it comes to picking books for my book club is that I'll end up picking a book like this where it's just so mediocre for me, but I don't have a lot to say about it, you know? Because I feel like sometimes that happens with thrillers where I'm just like, yeah, I feel pretty meh or like mediocre about this book, but I don't have a lot to say about it. And that's almost worse than like hating it, you know? Because at least if I hated something, I'm like usually pretty passionate about it and I have a lot to say about it. But with something like this, it's just very like, uh, forgettable. I don't know, like it's fine. But I am, you know, pretty sad that I didn't end up getting the writing retreat as a book troop pick because that probably might have been one of my top favorite book troop picks that I could have had this year. But hopefully, you know, crossing our fingers that What Lies in the Woods ends up going well for me next month. Like, I hope we picked a good one together. Anyways, that's going to be a wrap on this reading vlog. I read these three books. And if you are, you know, a member of my Patreon, you also saw me read episode 13. And if you're not on my Patreon, then I'll have the link down below for the extended version of this vlog where I also read episode 13. But yeah, this vlog, it was something, wasn't it? It was a little bit chaotic. You know, even though I didn't end up liking some of the stuff that I read this week, I'm so glad that I was able to get around to the writing retreat. And I'm so glad that it was a good one. You know, like I'm so glad that I had <laughs> a good experience with this book because gosh, I feel like, um, you know, I was just talking about this with Katie on Life Sprints, how I feel like ever since around last year, I've just noticed how there's a lot of new release thriller and new release horror stuff that I just have not been enjoying. And I don't know if it's because I'm getting pickier as I read more of this genre or if it's just because the books coming out just aren't as good anymore. But this book right here proves that there are still <laughs> really good thrillers coming out and that I can still really, really love a thriller. You know, like this right here, this was all I needed as proof. So I'm really glad that the writing retreat exists. I think this is a really fun, chaotic, unhinged thriller. And especially if you love reading about, you know, toxic female friendships, I think this would definitely be one that is worth checking out. But can't say, can't say I feel the same about these. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure there is an audience for these books. Like I'm sure there is. I've seen it on Goodreads. It's just not me. But anyways, that is going to be a wrap on this reading vlog. So thank you so much for watching. Of course, if you've read any of these books that I've read in this vlog, I would love to know what did you think of them. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye!